In this video, I thought we'd take a look at the upgrades available to you in Street Cart. There's a perception that carts are quite simplistic, maybe even agricultural devices, but racing carts, they're a different breed entirely. In Street Cart, you've got a lot of upgrades available to you. When you first start out in Cadets, they're quite simplistic, you can fill them with fuel, change tyres, not much more. But as you progress through the ranks through TKM, X30, PRJ, more and more upgrades will become available to you. In this video, we're going to take a look at what those upgrades can do for you. When you first start the game, not all upgrades are available to you. Some of them may need unlocking in manufacturer events such as these here. Every week, a number of races will be run, allowing you to unlock certain products such as this, the Power Finger Radiator. Finish with inside the qualifying target to unlock that item. Now I thought I'd show you two different carts here. Both of these are Cart Republic. Both are based on virtually identical running gear, but the one on the left on screen now hasn't been upgraded at all. It's totally bog standard. The one coming up on screen now, however, that has been upgraded to the maximum. To upgrade your cart, press the big blue button in the middle of the screen and it'll show you all your available options. Let's take a look at brakes first. This cart actually came with slightly modified brakes. You'll normally start with the stock brakes like you see on the screen there. But the path of any upgrade is normally to reduce weight and add adjustability. In this case, we get in the lightest possible brakes while giving us the adjustability to increase the strength or reduce the strength of the braking. With the seat, it's purely about weight reduction. You start off with the stock standard seat, progress through the SK Lightweight, the SK TB, and then ultimately the SK Carbon seat. That is the lightest possible seat that you can have, so it's the one you ideally want to have. Now, radiators, radiators. A cruel and unforgiving mistress I, I'm gonna do an entirely separate video on. But in a nutshell, if we go to this particular radiator, the IAM EX30, and zoom in here, the optimum temperature is what you're looking for. Each of those bars are in five degree incrementations. And on this particular one, it's gonna be sitting between 17, 18 degrees up to about 23, 24 degrees. That's the optimum temperature that this radiator works in. You have a lot of different radiators to choose from in Street Cart. All of them have a particular temperature range that they work best in. Some of them have a wider band than others. The works radiators tend to have a wider operating range than the non-works ones, but they will cost you more to run. The power fingers, they work better in cold temperatures. The firebirds, they work better in hot temperatures. And the AF radiator, that's in the middle. If you're only going to buy one particular radiator, the AF radiator is a good middle ground jack of all trades. But if you're going for the ultimate times, the ultimate lap times, ideally you want to find the correct radiator for the correct temperatures at that given time. Exhausts I'm also going to cover in a separate video. However, as a summary, beyond the standard stock exhaust, you have two different options available to you, the Power Finger and the Firebird. The Power Finger is geared towards acceleration, whereas the Firebird is geared towards giving you top end speed. You've got two different options in each exhaust system. One is you can upgrade it using SK money one stage at a time through level one, level two, level three, and level four. or as a quick purchase, you can use Aces to buy the level four Aces Power Finger. It's the exact same system as the level four you'd buy with SK. It just means you'd get to it a lot quicker, but it costs you Aces. The Power Finger, I've always said, is a very forgiving exhaust. It allows the engine to drop down to a lower rev before the engine bogs down, which means it's ideal for the novice driver who hasn't learned yet to carry speed through the sharp corners. It's also ideal for the really tight twisty circuits. For the long circuits and most of the balance circuits, always choose the Firebird. It's less forgiving, the uh, engine can drop to a certain rev and bog down, but once you've got to a point where you can learn to carry speed through the corners, the Firebird is the one to go for. Now then, fuel tanks. On the face of it, it's purely weight based. You start off with a 9 litre tank and you reduce the size of the tank incrementally. You have to go from the 9 litre to the 7 litre to the 6 to the 5 and the 3 and a half. You can't jump from the 9 to the 3 and a half unless you've already purchased it and then you've gone back to a larger tank for some reason. Usually you'd only use a large tank for endurance races which we don't tend to do very often. Now one point of note is that it will still cost you the same amount of money to fill a three and a half litre tank as it will for a nine litre tank. So that means the running costs are a lot more for a small tank than they are for a big tank. However, because it saves you a lot of weight, it means your cart will be faster. So unless there's a reason to have a larger tank, all the top drivers will run the smallest possible tank. 
I've also done a video on optimum fuel loads to suggest why three and a half liters of fuel is too much. Check that video out to find out how to get the fastest possible cart. And finally, engines. This is usually where the biggest single cost is gonna come from outside of buying the cart. The cart may come with a used engine or it may come with a standard engine. In the X30's case, you've got an IAME X30 used or an IAME X30 standard. Beyond that, there is a Ogden tuned version of the IAME engine, which is a lot more powerful. And also you've got the option of the Remo engine. Very, very similar in performance to the Ogden tuned IAME engine. Very little in it at all. Fuel consumption, very similar. Power is very similar. It's down to personal preference whether you go for the Remo or the Ogden tuned engine. So let's compare the difference between the standard and an upgraded cart. 128.7 kilograms this cart weighs without upgrade. With all the upgrades, it brings it down to 118.7. It's a 10 kilogram lighter cart. And in carting, weight is everything. Money in SK is hard to come by in street cart. So hopefully this video has given you a good idea of where to spend your hard earned money. I'll catch you next time.